Hi folks, and welcome back to Fishing with Dan. Well, it's raining outside again, and so I've been looking through some of my videos, previous videos, and it occurred to me that I bash on an awful lot about my homemade ground bait. And the reason I do make my homemade ground bait is, well, one, it's cheap, um, two, I can buy it in bulk, and three, you can't buy ground bait in the shops over in Australia where I've retired to. So, really, you don't have any choice. You're kind of stuck with making your own ground bait. And it's very simple, actually. Um, there's two uh, basic ingredients. You've got breadcrumbs from the supermarket, and you've got chicken layer pellets from the local pet shop, feed merchant, whatever. And as it says, these are for chicken feed. And what you do is you grind up those pellets until you've got this powder which is about the same consistency as the breadcrumbs. And the way you do that is to use one of these. And this is a coffee grinder. All you do is you put your pellets in the top, like that. Plug them in and turn it on. Good idea, put the lid on, because it does stick out. So grind the nose up, put it down there. I won't go any further, but you get the idea. Oops. You can see in the bottom of there, we've already got some. And you can grind these up to... I leave it on course to give me the, still this nice sort of texture, but if you want really, really fine ground bait, you just twist the top and it makes it into a a very, very fine uh, mix. So those are the two basic ingredients and how I chop them up. And now, how not to chop them up. Do not use one of these things, which is the sort of blade blender. It doesn't work very well. That's got a blade. It kind of throws them about a bit and knocks the edges off. But the um, coffee grinder, which is what that is, um, has a burr mill inside. I didn't know what a burr mill was until I looked it up the other day. Basically, it just grinds them against each other like that. So don't use one of these, use a coffee grinder. And if you think coffee grinders are expensive, that one I just showed you, only bought it the other day just to try it out. It cost me about £22, $39 Australian, or somewhere in between if you're in America. Um, you can also do what I did initially and go on to um, your local residents' Facebook page and say, hey, anyone getting rid of a, a coffee grinder? And you can usually pick one up for free. Um, I've actually got another one somewhere. This one. Ah, this is the one I've been using for the last sort of six or seven years. And it's still going strong and it didn't cost me a bean. <laughs> okay, so those are the two basic ingredients. So, why can't I just use breadcrumbs? Well, if you mix breadcrumbs together, I've actually done another video, and I've shown you, if you mix water and breadcrumbs together, there's a very fine line be between having ground bait and having bread paste, and mostly you end up with paste. So, that's the problem with just using um, white crumb. Now, of course, you can um, make your own white crumb. You can grab all the leftover bits of bread from the loaves of bread, grind them all down and you get the same thing and that costs you nothing. You can even go down to some of the local um, bakeries and stuff like that and get a great big bag of um, uh, crumb. That costs you peanuts and that's it. But I tend to just stick with this because it's convenient. So, why do I use the chicken layer pellets to go with that? Well, it's because this stuff, once it's ground up, doesn't really bind together at all. You can wet it down and it just comes apart. And what that means is, when you add it to this bag of ground bait, you end up with a very forgiving ground bait mix. It's very hard to make a mess of it, which is something I've done fairly frequently over the years. Um, certainly in the early days when I was, probably was throwing in cricket balls of, of bread paste without realising what I was doing. So anyway, what I do then is I take a 500 gram bag of supermarket uh, breadcrumb, a litre tub of the chicken layer pellets all ground up, mix them all together, and for this one, I'll put them in a bowl, 
so you can see what I'm doing. Right, just pour them in. Watch for the, the dust, really does come up, makes me sneeze. Right, you just mix it all together as, as normal. I'm not gonna do that just now because <coughs> it's already getting my nose. So you can do it that way. Now, some of you out there, especially the, the guys I fish with, are gonna say, yeah, you don't need to do that then. Just make up some brown crumb instead of using the chicken layer pellets. And to make brown crumb, I think what they do is they grab that uh, bread crumb and they either put it in the oven and sort of roast it, cook it in the oven until it goes brown, or they put it in the microwave. Now, I've heard versions of microwave for five minutes, take it out, stir it, four minutes, take it out, stir it, three minutes, take it out, etc., and so forth. Well, guys, I can't be bothered with all that. I just stick that in the grinder, chuck the two together, and you've got your base mix. That's it. That's all you've got to do. So, on top of that, then, you then need some sort of additive to give it a smell, flavour, taste, and so on. And again, you all know that my favourite one for a long time has been turmeric. And again, turmeric, you can go down to the local supermarket and you can buy those silly little tubs of it, or you can go down to the local Indian Emporium and buy a great wodge of it like this. And that's what I do. So, as far as amounts then, as we've said, one 500 gram bag of uh, breadcrumb, one litre box of the chicken layer pellets ground down, get me spoon, and then all I do is I take four heaped dessert spoonfuls and put them in. Oh, be careful with this stuff, it actually stains all the surfaces. It's not as bad as that chilli the other day, it doesn't burn everything, like sting everything, whatever, but it does actually cause you problems if you leave it on the wrong surface and your wife moans if she gets all her nice white surfaces covered in turmeric. So really all we're going to do is we're going to mix all that together and we're going to form a ground bait out of it. I use that and as I said last week I did a video on adding chilli powder instead and I did that video. I'll put a link up there above now so you can have a look at that one um, see how we got on but also if you're in the UK you could consider just adding trout pellet powder instead of the turmeric. Um, obviously there's all sorts of other things that you can do and one of the things I'm going to be doing as I said in last week's video, video is trying all these different uh, spices from the Indian Emporium. Done chilli, uh, we've got coriander, we've got garam masala, we've got cumin, uh, we've got garlic and so on. We're going to be trying those over the next few months but as I say, my basic sort of mix is these three ingredients, and that's all it is. I'll just whisk this up now, and then what we'll do is once it's ready, I'll chuck it in this container of water here, and we'll show you how good a ground bait it makes. If you're gonna use a food mixer, like I am just to, to whiz this stuff up, um, be aware that if you're using the mixer, don't be pouring in water at the same time. This is mains electricity, and it is dangerous to do it. So pour a little bit of water in, like that. Make sure it's right out of the way, a bit more water, and just do it like that. Now, for the amount of ground bait we're actually going to make up here, I'm using a one litre container of water, and if you're doing this on the bank, I tend to do it at home the night before, but this is a 2.2 pint I think this is a Drenum one, but they're all the same. 2.2 pints, 1.25 litres. So it comes to just above that lip on the top there, if you want to use that. I'll just get on with finishing uh, this, and then we'll come back, and as I say, I'll show you it working. So that's the initial mix done, just make sure that doesn't fall over, and I've probably used just over two thirds of the water. Now, as with all ground bait, you mix it until it feels just right so you can squeeze and then do that and it breaks down, but of course you have to wait 20 minutes now for that to be soaked up and we'll use probably most of the rest of this water. <laughs> Well, that's 
the uh, mix done and I've got a little bit of water left in there. I haven't made this a wet mix, it's a nice average sort of a, a mix, fairly fluffy, but if I now do this, as you see, it's falling apart as you'd hope it would. So the last thing we need to do, I'll move this out of the way, is to test it with the water tube. I'm going to keep all of these out of the way for you. I grab a ball of this, and again, in one of those other videos where I was talking about ground baiting mistakes, I was talking about how much you squeeze it. Now, I've given this quite a reasonable squeeze. If I now drop this in, I'm assuming that I'm going to be fishing in sort of five or six feet of water, and here we are, it's breaking up in the, the lower part of the water. If I squeezed a bit more, I could probably make it get to the bottom before it started to break up. But also, you can see, hopefully you can see, about there maybe, yeah, you can see it's breaking up quite nicely. We're getting some um, bits and pieces floating up, and that's something else I should mention. As I said before, I think, I always make mine up the night before, and what that does, it gives you an inert mix. This one is definitely a bit more fizzy, there's stuff coming up. If you want that, great, no problem, but if you make it the night before, it will actually have far less flotation um, of particles and so on. As I say, mix it on the bank, you're going to get this sort of um, more active mix. Um, we're breaking this down quite nicely now. I'll give you a really good close-up. You can see already the ball's breaking down, parts coming off. And so in a very short space of time, that will actually be on the bottom, spread out, and doing what I need it to do, and attracting fish. Of course, I mostly fish for carp over here. Um, if you're fishing for um, silverfish in the UK or something like that, you may try, uh, as I say, a different additive. You may also want to just put it through a, a riddle so you get rid of any sort of slight lumps. Uh, you get that with any ground bait, but it's entirely up to you. Another thing you can do is, as I said before, don't put more additives in. Don't, don't try mixing all these things together because I don't think that works. But this is just ground hemp, and I ground this up in the, uh, the coffee grinder there. And you can put that in by all means, because that gives them particles to feed on. But look, that's it. That's the whole thing. It's so simple, you wouldn't believe it. But as you've seen over the years, I've done over 215, I think it is now, videos. And that's pretty much all I've used. And hopefully you'll all agree that the results have been pretty reasonable both on pleasure days and in terms of matches. And I've won and placed in my fair share of, of those over here. So I'm pretty pleased with the whole thing. And I can pretty confidently say this stuff works. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, click the like button. Oh, and there's one other thing. A big thank you to all my subscribers. This week, I reached over 10,000 subscribers. Who knew? <laughs> well, anyway. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Hopefully there's going to be lots more of you. But also thank you to those viewers who don't necessarily watch uh, my videos as regularly. But anyway, as I say, it's a milestone and thank you very much. See you next time. Bye for now.